if I could only get one cybersecurity certification, which one would it be? I know a lot of you are wondering what my answer is to that question, so let's talk about it in this video. So right off the bat, I know that many of you are curious about cybersecurity certifications. Maybe you're just starting out in your journey, or maybe you're a seasoned pro with many years of experience. Regardless of the camp that you're in, we all wanna make sure that we're using our time and money effectively, both initially to get a certification and over time, since a lot of these certifications require ongoing maintenance fees. If you're anything like me, you love to learn whether that's from a certification, a degree program, a training program, a YouTube video, or just about anything else that's gonna teach you different skills or information. In the cybersecurity career field, it's basically a requirement to keep learning or you're gonna reach a point in your career where you aren't making any progress and you're watching other people pass you by. During my career, I've achieved both an undergraduate and graduate degree, plus I'm in the double digits for the number of certifications that I have. I'm curious, do you think or feel like you need a ton of different certifications to either stand out in the cybersecurity career field or even just to work in cybersecurity? Let me know down in the comment section below what you think and let's discuss it. Anyways, let's first talk about what a certification is and the ultimate goal that they achieve. Some of you may know this, but in some professions like being a lawyer or a doctor, you need some kind of professionally regulated credential or license to actually work in that field. In cybersecurity, we don't have that, but we have these things called certifications that are essentially exams governed by some private company most of the time, and they're trying to put their stamp of approval on your baseline of abilities in a certain area. For example, we have certifications like the CCNA, Security Plus, the CISSP, and there's a ton of other options out there. Certainly some of these certifications hold more value than others in the industry and in the eyes of employers. That's also very obvious when you search on job boards for various certifications based on the results that are returned. Most major certifications require either continuing education credits, meaning that you attend additional trainings or presentations, or you literally have to retake the certification exam to revalidate your skills. From a payment standpoint, these work out similarly because you either pay so much every year to help the vendor maintain the certification, or you pay whatever the exam price is at the time. In all honesty, the second option is usually worse for you because the prices of the exams tend to go up more dramatically than the annual fees do. These annual fees though range anywhere from $50 roughly up to $500 for GEAC certifications. As you might be able to tell, if you get enough certifications, you can start racking up high expenses just to maintain certifications on an annual basis. Sometimes these maintenance fees also just feel like we're paying simply to keep the letters attached to our name, while others do provide some ongoing benefits to our careers. If you're enjoying the content so far, make sure to leave a like so that way YouTube knows this content is helpful for other people. Also make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon, that way when new content drops you'll get notified. And check out the description because I've left resources related to this video. Alright, let's get back to the content. What if we were to choose just one certification to achieve and to maintain over our cybersecurity career? Which certification makes the most sense to do this if we actually had to choose? When I look at my career with the degrees and certifications and what I would put as my biggest impact item, it's hands down the CISSP or the CIS. You might have seen that I have several videos on the CISSP from training all the way to passing the exam very quickly and that's because it's extremely valuable. If you don't know what the CISSP is, I highly recommend doing some research on it and watching my videos about it, but at a high level, it's the gold standard in our industry for a certification because it covers basically all aspects of information security. From physical security, to software security, to cyber security, basically everything about security is covered. Now as a disclaimer for newer professionals, there is an experience requirement of four years with a one year waiver to actually get awarded the certification once you pass the exam. That said, I have a video on becoming an associate of ISC Square by taking the CISSP exam early, but in this video, we aren't gonna really talk about that before period because I've covered it in the other videos that are on my channel and that you should watch. For this video, we're assuming that you have roughly enough experience to qualify, but this information is good for those who are earlier on in their careers to help them plan a strategy too. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's continue. Honestly, learning all the information for the CISSP exam is really challenging because it covers a lot of information, much of which you've probably never seen in most environments. In highly secure and regulated areas like the Department of Defense or the DOD in the United States, 
you certainly have a greater chance of getting exposed to more of the domains by the nature of the environment. But many of the industries aren't gonna give you that outside of that environment especially early on in your career. That's certainly a huge advantage, but it's not gonna make or break your score. I remember back to when I passed the CISP, and for those that don't know, I took the exam before I had the required experience, so I didn't even get the benefits right away. The DOD treats the Associate of ISC squared similarly to a full CISSP, but again, that's not a discussion for this video. It wasn't until I was fully endorsed that I actually started realizing the benefits of the certification. Literally, when I was applying to jobs, I feel like the CISSP made a statement that I was qualified professional in a lot of interviews. There was definitely some interviews where that wasn't enough, but again, in general, I feel like it was a substantial credential to have. I also noticed that in the DOD, there's a lot of CISSP certified professionals, but when you get into other industries, it's a lot less common, especially at the non-management levels, so the mid and even the senior level jobs. That means that if you have the CISSP, you just need to be able to speak to the technical or non-technical aspects of whatever job you're interviewing for and you'll be in a great position to land some of those jobs. Certification vendors might not want me telling you this information, but honestly, I went through a bunch of interviews and that's really how I felt things went. From a technical standpoint, I think you'll need a lot more evidence of knowledge through projects and work experience if you don't have the CISSP. That doesn't mean that I didn't know what I was talking about as I was going through these interviews, but it definitely removed a lot of concern that the hiring manager had or could have had by interviewing a potential new employee for a technical job and it decreased the amount of technical questions that I was actually asked. Okay, so now that you know the certification that I would pick if I stopped at just one, let's talk about the downsides of stopping at a single certification. If you aren't aware, the cybersecurity career field is one where you've gotta keep learning if you wanna stay current with trends and what's going on. If you wanna stay on the cutting edge of trends, you've gotta work even harder to do that. Obviously, some of this is going to depend on the type of role that you're in because some jobs like penetration testing or SOC analysts, they actually need the latest techniques to either use or defend. On the flip side, GRC analysts might not need to know the latest exploit technique, although the knowledge certainly is always good to have. Either way, certifications help you learn different topics and they provide a structured experience with specific domains or objectives. Another reason for continued learning is that newer professionals are always hungry to grow and accelerate their careers. So if you become complacent, you might eventually lose that professional advantage advantage from your previous work experiences. Even though you don't necessarily need to have really broad knowledge in most cybersecurity jobs, learning some different topics can help your brain recharge and grow your skill set. As you get later in your career, you're likely going to slow down on certifications, but it just doesn't look good if you go three, four, or five years without adding anything new to your resume or profile. You might also want to change areas of cybersecurity and pursuing a certification can get you exposure to a new area. Question of the day, if you could only choose one certification to study and pursue, which one would it be? Let me know down in the comment section below. Honestly, aiming for one certification and stopping there isn't a great idea as we discussed, but it's kind of a fun exercise that really makes you evaluate and prioritize the different options that are available. Everybody has different career experiences that drive the decisions that they make. You need to analyze those decisions and ultimately make sure that they're the correct decision based on what you know and what others might know that give you additional insight. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.